Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group. Today I'd like to talk to you about the FTP function of the DAC station or sometimes called the DX Advanced. The FTP function or file transfer protocol function allows the DX Advanced to automatically send data files across a network to a PC running FTP server software. The most common FTP server software out there is Internet Information Services. This comes standard with Microsoft Windows XP Professional. It can be added through the uh, control panel under uh, Add Remove Software and then under Microsoft uh, Applications on the left hand side you can go ahead and do that. Let me kind of show you quickly where that is. It's not installed by default, but it does exist on the software. So we're going to go to Add Remove Programs here and show you where you can install it if you don't already have it installed. And right here is the Add Root Remove Windows Components. If we click that, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up all the optional stuff that you can install with Windows XP and I'll just kind of show you where you can install Internet Information Services. Okay, uh, while it's waiting to do that, some of the files that you can transfer are data files, you can transfer screen snapshots, you can uh, do FTP test. Okay, now that it's uh, booted up here, let's take a look here. Right here, Internet Information Services. If we take a double click on that, you can kind of see all the stuff that you can install there. Uh, by default, uh, I just installed everything to make sure I had everything necessary in order to have Internet Information Server. But if you don't have the stuff installed, you can go ahead and go through this method and install it. Another FTP server that's out there is a product called Bulletproof FTP and that also works great and can be added on to just about uh, any Windows operating system and um, if you do a search on Google for bulletproof FTP it's, uh, it's a good FTP server as well. Okay so I'm just gonna cancel out of here since I already have Internet Information Server installed. Alright and I'm gonna close this out. Okay so what I'm looking at right now is a VGA capture of the screen on my DX Advance. And let's just take a quick look at it. We can see that I've stopped recording. In order to do configuration at the deeper level, you have to stop recording. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to hit the menu key on the front of the DX Advance. Okay, and I'm going to hold the function key now for three seconds. One, two, three. This is going to take me to the basic settings mode. Under the basic settings mode, under menu, I'm going to go down to communications ethernet. And I'm going to go to IP address, make sure I have an IP address set up in my unit. So I've got it 10200110. That looks like it's good. I'm going to hit the escape key now to back out of that. Now I'm going to go down to server. Okay, and server modes. And underneath this, I need to make sure that use FTP is turned on as well as uh, if I want to see uh, some of the web reports and web pages I turn use web on okay so now I'm gonna escape out of there uh, next thing I'm gonna go down to is FTP client I'm gonna pick that an FTP transfer file I'm gonna pick what type of FTPs I'm gonna allow to do so I'm gonna say send uh, display and event data send report data and send any screen snapshots I can take after a data file is closed out below it's basically saying how long to wait before sending it so I'm saying as soon as you're done making that file saving that file off I want you to send it okay I'm gonna escape out of here next I'm gonna go down to FTP connection let me explain a little what's going on here you can set up a primary and a secondary FTP connection if you take a look down in the bottom left corner there, you can see uh, I'm currently selecting primary, but what uh, the DX Advanced allows you to do is let you set up two different servers. So it'll try the first server or the first connection. If it can't send the file to the first connection, it'll try the second connection. 
if it can't get to the second connection, it'll wait till the next go around where it closes off another file, then it'll attempt to send all closed files. So looking at what we've got configured here, I put in the IP address of the FTP server. This is the IP address of the adapter that's currently set up to receive FTP files. If you have a laptop or a PC with a couple Ethernet ports on it, uh, then make sure that this is the IP address of the jack that's listening for FTP traffic. Port 21, that's standard for FTP, but if you happen to change it on your FTP server, make sure it matches up here. Login name. Uh, this is important to know here. If you set up a local account on your PC, then the name of the PC is going to be its domain. So in this case, the name of my PC is CPC 551-000-0898, and the user is called FTP. So this is a user I've set up locally on my PC. Okay, if you happen to have uh, a network connection that uh, is uh, some type of other like domain that your IT people have set up, then odds are the first part of that is going to be the domain, and then the next part is going to be the username. So once again, the first part in this case is my computer name, followed by FTP, which is a name that I have picked for a user on that. Password is just the password that I've given for that particular user. Account can be left blank. PASV mode can be left off. And the last here is forward slash and then the name of the virtual directory. This is not the hard directory, which is something like a C drive and then my folder uh, DX2000 FTP. This is what I've set up as the virtual directory inside the FTP server. And I'll show you what that means later. So currently, we're all set up for FTP on here. And I'm just going to escape out of here and pick end. All right, now that I'm backed out of here, let's go to Internet Information Services. So to get to that, you would go Start, Control Panel, and you'd go to Administrative Tools, and then underneath that, you'd pick Internet Information Services. I've already got it up and running in the background here, so let's take a look here. So when you get it, odds are there's not going to be any FTP sites, so you're going to have to go in here and uh, actually create one. Okay, so you could go new virtual directory here. So I've got FTP site. Okay, let's take a look at the properties for that. Okay, description, XP, FTP, IP address. This is where you select which of your IP addresses you're going to use. In this case, my laptop has two network connections on it, and this is the one I'm using to listen for file transfers. Okay. Once again, port 21, this should match what's on your DX Advance. Uh, the rest of this isn't that important. I just leave it at default. Under security accounts, um, I have allow anonymous connections, but you don't have to do that. And then once again, see, here's that username that we're talking about. So it's the name of my PC, and then FTP is the name of the user, and there's the password. Okay, and down here, I just kind of said some other things like administrator and so on. Messages, I don't have anything there. Home directory, this is just default where they make a uh, directory on most PCs that have internet information services installed. So I'm just going to go OK here. Now here's some of those virtual directories that I created. So under this I went new and I went virtual directory Okay, to create that. So let's take a look at this virtual directory. So it's a directory located on this computer and there's the actual physical path so you can see that the virtual directory name which is what we use inside the DAC station is different from the hard address here. So in this case C colon backslash DX2000 FTP is the actual directory sitting on my computer here. So we can see right there that's the actual directory. Okay. All right, I'm going to allow people to read, write, log visit, stuff like that to it. You can see I've created some other ones here for like my MW100 DAC master, 
the older DAC station 200. So I've created some virtual directory so I can have my DX2000 dump files here, my MW100 dump files here, and my DX200 dump files here. Now if you have multiple DAC stations, you'd most likely create a virtual directory for each one of them so that they could each dump to their own directory so that you don't uh, confuse your files or have files from the same rec from different recorders in the same directory. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm going to bring up my computer, I'm going to go to the C drive, I'm going to go to the hard directory sitting on my C drive and you can currently see it's empty. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my DAC station interface as well and what I'm going to do is on my DAC station I'm going to hit the function key. The function key is going to bring up a little message a uh, set of uh, menus on the bottom and I'm just going to go next here and uh, I'm going to go next again and the last selection we can kind of see here is something called FTP test. Okay, This button once FTP is enabled allows me to send a demo file across to see if my FTP connection is working. If it's working we should see a file show up in this directory so I'm going to hit the FTP test button now and if everything works and I'm going to pick primary to send to my primary server that I've set up. If everything works it should say that the execution is complete and we can see over here that the file has shown up. So now in the future if I start and stop recording that's going to create a file if I've got it set to create a file every hour when it closes the file out every hour the file is going to stop. If I hit the function key again and I say snapshot it's going to take a snapshot of the screen and send it across and we can see right here that it took a snapshot of the screen okay so FTP is set up this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa's Network Solutions Group thanks for watching